even at the start of this season, I remember seeing him say that he should be mm. going to Qatar based on how he is so confident in himself and in his ability and what he brings to teams. Um, he has missed a few games this season with, with a hamstring injury and he has had injuries throughout his career, unfortunately. He scored four goals in eight appearances. Yeah. So obviously not a bad return at all, despite even those injury issues. Based on what we're seeing right now from Callum Wilson, does he go to Qatar? Well, if he's fit going into the last game before the squad's announced and before they travel, if he's fit, I'm taking him all day long. I said at the start of the season to you, Nat, he's the one that I would leave a space for. Because Why? What do you like I about I think he's because he's so direct with his pace. He's incredibly strong, leads the line brilliantly. I think he gels well with team players. Um, I would make... I think England especially have been quite guilty over the years of not taking an extra forward. Now, you could argue, well, there's Tammy Abrams, there's obviously Ivan Tony, um, there's Kane, and then I would I would look at Callum Wilson as the one I would take. I think he's just slightly different, obviously because Tammy and, and, and Ivan Tony are far bigger in their presence mm-hmm. as they play, but he's direct, and, he, and I think he's a better finisher. He's a real natural finisher, Callum Wilson. He's explosive, and I think... I really believe that he was the one who could... Even if, if he, because we're all, the one reason people give Callum Wilson, it's always the same argument, injuries, which is a fair point to a degree. He's had bad injuries. He's not just muscle tears and lucky he had an hamstring this year. He's had some very bad injuries. Mm. Every time he's come back, he's been, he's been superb. He really is a player, should be playing Champions League football. So if Harry Kane, okay, he still might play if he lost his form. But if his form was that bad in the World Cup, Callum Wilson, for me, would be the one that could step in that game role. The problem is, that you're right to mention the injuries and how that is a reason a lot of people say it's difficult to it's take him because he's a risk. Yeah. Because if you look at his injury history, unfortunately for him, it's pretty much every season. I think there might have been 17, 18, I'm looking at right now, that he had a full season. Um, but he has had, you know calf injury 125 days he missed mm. um last season for, for newcastle he's They're had hamstrings he's had yep he's had cruciate ligament rub, ruptures um twice you're absolutely yeah. right in that one for when he was playing for bournemouth he's had hamstring problems he's had knee injuries um that is his biggest problem unfortunately yeah. it's the risk that you take in, in taking somebody who has a long history of injuries that could break down that could even day one of training, pick up an injury. That being said, any player can pick up an injury. Exactly. So when you're saying it's a 26-man squad this time around that mm. Gareth Southgate can pick, so he has the benefit of picking three extra players when normally it's 23. Does that mean he's picking, you've mentioned the four forward options. Mm. Does he pick all four? Yeah, I pick four, absolutely. I remember one World Cup, there was three forwards. I think it was one with Theo Walcott when it was, mm. I remember thinking, that's a real lack of forwards. I think it was under Sven. Are you putting Marcus Rashford in here as well? Um, don't know. Don't know yet. I'm not sure. Marcus has shown that his game's lifted very much so and he looks like he's got his swagger back and his confidence. I think he's one of them, again, you'd have to look at how he's going in the final games. But if, if Callum Wilson's fit, I'm taking him because I, I, I look at World Cups or European Championships as... It's a six, seven game tournament if you go deep. And if you keep a player fit for six, seven games, you could end up being in the final, maybe even winning it. Mm. So you need every possibility available to you. And I think he's slightly different. I mean, in England, you know, Tony's been unlucky. And I think, I, I, me and you have had this conversation now. I don't get why the Italian and the, uh, the German game, what was that about for Ivan Tony? I, yeah. it, tell, it felt to me that. The decision had already been made that, yeah, we'll look at him, but that's that's about it. Mm. I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's a space for him. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people were scratching their heads as to why you'd bring in a player um, and not utilise them, especially when you, you've never seen them play in an England shirt. No. It might be different if he was three years ago and he had a debut or whatever, but to not even give them the chance on a pitch to show what they well, might I'm... be able to do, just to give you that option of if Harry Kane, we have to drop him or he gets injured, at least we can try out another player in that position. Who I said at times, I think there were some similarities in the way that, that Kane and, and, and Tony play, I yeah. feel. 
Um, I'm not saying that Tony is on the same caliber of Harry Kane. I'm obviously not, but I do think there are some similarities in the way that they play. And I find it very bemusing well, that he didn't try him out at all. I know it's a bad example, but some you know, I have to talk about personal experiences sometimes. I got called in in March for World Cup, uh, sorry, Euro 88, and I came in in March to play against Poland. OK, I'm going to Republic, Island, Republic of Ireland squad. We didn't have the same luxury. We didn't have as many great players as England had. But I, I was called over to play. Jack Chelton put me in the team to watch me against Poland. I was basically on trial in that game mm. to see whether he was going to use me. And I played well, scored a goal, and he called me up again. Now, the idea to choose Ivan Tony in the squad to me was, I'm looking at him. Yeah, I don't care about the opposition. I'm, I want to look at Ivan Tony. Mm. Yeah, it's a, stra- it's a strange no. one. I, I know some people try to defend it by saying it was just a chance to get to know him, get him to see what he's like within the group and within the camp and even how he reacts to the setback of not playing against Italy and like, you mm. know, then... But still, I don't buy that at all. I think that's... No. Personally, I think that was negligent, but we talked about that before. Mm. Um, with regards to, to Newcastle then, um, they've only conceded 10 goals this season, Cass. They've got the best defence in the league so far. Dan Byrne has been a part of that. Does he get into Gareth Southgate's team. Yeah, I heard Neil Warnock talking about him in midweek and I did a piece at the start of January last year, or this year, when talked about the best signing that Newcastle had made and you could debate that. But I thought it was Dan Byrne at the time because I'd watched him as a centre-half and left-back for Brighton on numerous times. Very underrated. And Hearing Neil Warnock talk about him, you know, he just does everything simple at a very high level. Mm -hmm. You know, he's... He does really well. I would, I would certainly. And cause it, for me, this is how I see England. Okay, people ask me all the time, "Do you, who do you think will win the World Cup?" It's a hardcore. It's a cup competition. There's a lot of good sides. How how do England? How do you think they're fair? Well, I don't think England can win it unless they get the back four or five mm-hmm. sorted out. I don't. I think they can win it on their folder, forwards, but I certainly don't think they can win it with their their back back line. Whatever way. Gareth Southgate goes. I think that's the issue. If they can solve the problems there and having someone like Dan Byrne come in, I I think does help because he's a real natural defender. Trippier's another great addition. You know, Newcastle's back line this year has been brilliant. Mm. They've been the best in the Premier League. You know, watching the game Tottenham versus Newcastle last week, if you said to me a composite between the back line of Tottenham's and, and Newcastle, I nearly take every Newcastle defender from Botman to... OK, maybe not Shaw. Romero's a strange one for Spurs because he's not really got going this year. He had mm. a bad injury and he hasn't really got going. I wouldn't take out Eric Dyer over any of the Newcastle ones, but if we've got, we're talking about England. Tripp here and, and, and um, obviously Dan Byrne, certainly in the squad, whether they both play um, is debatable, but they're, they're really good players, sort of players that I feel you need going into tournaments.